How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lie Hobby Time. I was thinking about my wild imaginary west the other day and figured that a good next step in expanding this universe would be to build a town. So of course I decided to build the quintessential wild western town building, the saloon. I started by gluing these two pieces of wood together and topping them off with some foam. I'm going to be using this guy here as my scale reference. I'm not sure what his name is. I wanted the design of this to be kind of the classic corner saloon with the wraparound porch and the batwing doors. I also wanted to include a little staircase on the side to give access to the second level. For the main structure of the walls, I'm going to be using this foam core here. I guess it's just the core of the foam core. So just foam, I guess. I peeled the paper off so it would be easier to cut. Took that over to my hot wire table and I cut some nice clean lines. I did also miter all of these corners to help them fit together a little better. I then got out my bag of basswood strips to make the wooden panels. I lined those up and I tried to cut them all in one fell swoop, but I was not strong enough for this. But I am strong enough to admit that. I had to switch to the score and snap method instead, and that actually worked out pretty well. I then applied some wood glue to the foam, and I pressed that down over all the cut pieces of wood. And I repeated that process a few more times to make all the rest of the walls. After those were done, I dry fit them to make sure that they were all fitting properly, and they were, so I moved on to the porch. I guess you could call this a porch, boardwalk, a veranda, a gallery, a deck. I'm not really sure what to refer to it as. If you know the correct terminology for, for a western building, the, little, the porch outside, let me know. I did want all the boards to be off the ground a little bit, so I cut up some strips to use as spacers. Then it was time to cut out the door. I used our little friend here as a size reference again, traced out the lines, and then I used my Dremel Stylo Wren with a cutoff wheel to cut that out. To make the doors, I traced out the shape I was looking for, then I switched to a sanding drum, and I carved out two almost perfectly identical batwing doors. I also added a little bit of flare to the top of the door frame. It's kind of hard to see when the roof is on, but it is there. And I glued the doors in place made a little window and I added windows to the side walls as well. Next I glued all the walls in place and those mitered corners worked like a charm. I thought everything was looking pretty good so I went ahead and glued down the spacers and I installed my boardwalk, porch, deck. For the roof of the arcade, I glued some strips together, measured those out, made some little posts out of toothpicks, and I cut out each section of roof and I glued it in place. I then added a little piece of trim on all of the corners and halfway down the length of each wall. I then made the little staircase on the side that goes up to the second floor. I glued each of the steps to the stringer and then to the wall. I added a little door, which I will detail later. I added some beams across and I used a piece of scrap styrene as a lid. 
I went with some plastic canvas to go on the top. I should have found something that was more to scale, but I didn't have anything on hand, so I had to make do with that. Then it was time to start adding the details. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to build on the top of this thing. I did know I wanted it to be semi-industrial and sci-fi-ish, so I kind of just made it up as I went. I used these styrene I-beams, which I bought at the store. It's kind of silly because it would be very easy to make them, but that's okay. I knew I wanted to have some tanks on the top of this building, so I found this cool bottle. I added some little details like this little plastic ring and some tin ties. Glued that to the top. I also made some more tanks out of some receipt paper rolls. And I connected those together using bits and corners from some sprues. I also added a few greeblies on the sides to help bring a little bit of that sci-fi stuff down. I did this little valve from a coffee bag. And of course some cords and hoses made from guitar strings. I also added a little smokestack with more of those tin ties on it and some antennas. Antennas have a really good way of making things look sci-fi-esque that shouldn't be sci-fi-esque. As do hoses made from guitar strings. So that people can get all the way to the top, I made a little rooftop access. The door has a closer on it. That detail is important for later. I added another antenna and some handrails that I made out of some brass wire. I added a few more details off camera and I was really happy with how it was looking. So I decided to move on to the paint. I primed it with a Zenithal highlight and then I used my airbrush with some black to add a pre-shade. I then applied a coat of mahogany brown over all of the wooden surfaces. I then painted the big tank and a few of the little tanks with a light blue turquoise teal color. I then added some greens and yellows to that. And it kind of ended up looking like the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo. Luckily I was able to fix that with the washes and the weathering. I sprayed some tan over all of the mahogany to lighten it up a little bit. Then I went back with a paper towel and I scuffed up Scooby-Doo's van. After I did that, I applied some brown washes. I then took some glossy black paint and I filled in all of the windows. Then added some dry brushing to the top. I also painted on all of the dirt. I painted the smokestack with a brownish red color. I used the airbrush to bring back a little bit of contrast to all of those corners. I added a little bit more scuffing and weathering and all of the metallic details. And then I painted saloon above the door. This was the first time I did go back over and paint it again and it looked much better the second time. Then painted the base with black 3.0 and moved on to the figures. I'm not really sure what these guys do for a living, but I gave them a Zenithal highlight. Painted them in classic cowboy attire. This guy looked like he needed a red shirt. Added some skin colors and some washes. Those guys were done. I then glued each of those guys in place, and once that was done, I called it good.
is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you to all of my patrons. I appreciate you all very much. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time.